Okay, so I'm just cleaning up real quick. But as you can see, basically what you need is cups, paint, and glue. So, and there's your canvas. You can use canvas board or canvas, or just regular canvas, it doesn't matter. Or just a hard surface that's not going to bend. You can use any kind of paints. It's, it doesn't have to be Liquitex or Craftsmart. You can use any kind of acrylic paint. And just a cup. It doesn't have to have the colors labeled. I do. But any plastic cup will work. So you're going to start off by putting about a good sized dollop in the bottom of one of the cups with the color that you want. And you can see that's how big it is approximately. I don't measure it, I just do it by hand. So then you're going to use Elmer's glue, which is an alternative to pouring medium, which I find that is actually better. And you put a good sized dollop about the size of the paint that you put in. I'll show you that too. Just like that. And then you're going to take your water. And you can pour a good size water. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say it's too much. It's, there it shows you. You can kind of play with it until you figure it out. And I use a stirring stick. It doesn't have to be like a professional stirring stick or like something that's made for it. You can, I just use the end of a paintbrush. And as you can see, you just stir it until you it dissolves the glue in the water. And it's almost like a liquidy, kind of thick not gritty paint material. It looks like if you pour it almost. I just stack the cups up so you can see better. But then once you're done with the paint, you want to make sure to set it aside so you know you've already done it. it up until it gets to that consistency there we go and you can take your paper towel and just um, wipe the end of the star stick off then you put your cup aside and it should look about that consistency and you put your cup aside now and then you take another one for example, orange, and I'll take my orange, and again, this is my Craftsmart one, it doesn't, the brand of paint doesn't matter, put about the same size dollop in, with tubes, I'll show you, you want to use about an amount of the same, add your Elmer's glue again, with a bottle of Elmer's glue, you could probably make about five of these, depends what size canvas you're using, Again, your water, you can estimate it. I would add, and I'll sh I showed you in the first one what, how much I added. But you can kind of play around with it. And just keep stirring it up. And dry the tip off of that one and go ahead and sit that aside and then we grab another cup just repeating the process with different colors this is light blue I'm gonna use my Liquitex basics again you can use any paint style you want for the thousandth time and then just put the same size dollop as I did on the first one then the same size dollop of glue there I'm putting the glue in might have been a little bit too much and then just stir it up just close that paint bottle from my last thing
and that's perfect. Not too watery, not too thick, it's perfect. Then I'll wipe my paintbrush off, and I got yellow, which is my last color. So I know that in this painting that I'm going to get green, because yellow and blue and the colors go together. But that's kind of, we're okay with that. And everything, now you can do this first off the bat with a pouring medium, like with Lequitex pouring medium. However, if you're going to do it with kids, or if you're going to do it in general, I think the easiest, cleanest, and in my opinion it comes out the best, is just to use Elmer's school glue. It can be Elmer's school glue, it can be glue wall, it can be any any type of Elmer's glue works. However, I wouldn't use rubber cement. Like, try to keep the white glue. And use white glue, don't use clear glue. And when you're done, you can put a layer of lacquer on it, but you don't have to. I don't normally. I do sometimes if I do dark colors, but Again, you can pick pretty much any colors. This is going to be a very colorful piece. And then I'm just setting all my paint to the side. And I'm putting my cap on my Elmer's glue. And you should never use the nozzle. The nozzle. Take it off and just push it right out of the bottle. Okay, perfect. Okay, now I'm down at my surface where I'm going to be painting the actual thing. So I'm going to start and I'm just going to take my color, whatever color you want, and you pour it out in a circle. It doesn't have to be a circle. You can just pour it in lines like I'm doing right now. Any way you can hit it against the canvas. You can pretty much do anything you want to get your paint onto the canvas. Then I'll take my next color and I'll pour it inside of the circle and do whatever I want again like that and I can just hit it against the canvas like I want any any version works you just keep pouring any way you want there's no rules no technique um you can do several circles and dots or you can do just none or you can do all all um spirals and just hitting it against the canvas you can kind of do whatever texture and whatever style pouring you want to do. My red I tried to cover a lot of the canvas with because you want to make sure to get the edges because the edges are probably the hardest part. And again, you want to use a surface that's not going to bend. And you want to make sure you have a drying area and you have a separate working area. I suggest doing it on a board. And then you go ahead and move your cups out of the way and you pick up your board and you just tilt it in whatever direction you want and as you can see the paint's moving there's no rules you don't have to tilt it any certain way and you tilt it and your paint is going to drip off the canvas onto whatever surface you're doing and your hands are going to get paint or glue on them you can use gloves but and then you can take your finger like i'm doing now and i'm just i'm pulling it to the edge of the canvas you can do that you don't have to it depends what size canvas you're using. Then you just keep maneuvering it, just like I'm doing. I'm moving, taking the paint on my finger to the edge. And you might some, get some cells to naturally pop up. That's normal too. But I'm gonna show you in a minute how I get my cells to pop up. And you, if you're doing it with kids, again, I would not do this. I mean, it depends what age group you're doing it with. But I do it on all of my things. But if you're an adult, you definitely should do this. It makes it a lot better. And I'm just putting more. And don't be afraid to put more paint on spots that you need it. Like in the corners, I need more paint. So I'm just going back and adding a little bit more paint. Again, you... If it's going to be kind of hard to pull up off the surface once you set it back on the wet paint. But again, I'm just tilting it. Paint will drop off again. I'm maneuvering the canvas as the paint moves in all directions. 
and using my finger to pull it to the side. Like so. And then just pulling the color. And then you can really see those parts that were white. You can move them. And you never want to you never want to just leave white spots. If you leave a little spot, you can use white paint though. I love using white paint in one of my paint choices. You can use pretty much anywhere from three colors to six if you want, but I normally use a combination of four or five, sometimes three. And I'm just tilting it again. As you can see, the paint's running off onto my surface. That's normal. I'm using my finger to smooth it out. Again, this is not one of my favorite ones. The I didn't I don't not really liking the color combinations. It's a little too brown for me. But I have, as you can see, I have wet paint on my hands, so I just go get a paper towel. And you know you can dry your dry your hands off. So when you're done, you actually should be able to, you should have dry paint on your hands and you can just wash it off under the sink, it comes right off. And this is a torch, like a, um, a chef's torch. And I use the torch to create cells. You can use a lighter or you can use anything that basically produces fire. Um, it's a butane torch that I'm using. So you, what you do is you just direction it towards, not right up against it, but so that the flame hits the paint. And you can't really see it how it works, but you can just move in a side to side, back to forth motion. Just like I'm doing now. You don't want, if you are, go too far and it does start to burn the paint, it's okay. You'll just get a little black bubble and it should pop and it'll go away. It doesn't. You might see maybe a little smoke coming up. That's normal. If you see some, I'm trying to think. If you see, if you see these little, you'll see cells appear. These little circular things. It's hard to see from this angle. I'll show you a close up of the picture when it's done in the end of the video. That will show you the complete project and all the cells. Um, but again. You can't really go too far. It's completely safe to use the torch. I mean, as long as you are, you know, as long as you know what you're doing, you, unless you hold it right up against the canvas for two minutes, it's not going to catch on fire. And I just turned it off. And I'm just feeling to feel it. There should be some heat, as long as it's not like really really hot you should be good and I'm just grabbing out another mat and I'm go ahead and moving it onto there just like that And I can take some of the paint like I just did, and I can splash it on some of those areas that you can kind of see the white through the paint. Just to get some more color in those areas, some more paint. Just like that. It's not too hard. Sorry you can't see me. I didn't recognize that. There we go. Now I'll move the camera over so you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and take my torch again. My butane chef torch, you know, that you can use to do the top of food and like different food things. You can get them online, Bed Bath & Beyond, pretty much anywhere. And then a can of butane. But I really do think, again, it's not necessary. You don't have to use the butane torch, but you can use a lighter, too, as an alternative. But, again, you don't have to. You still 
can get cells, it's just not as wide variety. If you want to get bigger cells, you can use silicone to mix in with one of the colors in your paint, and that will make bigger cells. But again, I'm just using my torch again to get some of the paint that I just put back on with my finger. Side to side motion. You don't want to hold it in one place too long, or you might again get that little black bubble that it just go comes up, pops, and goes away. It's not a big deal at all. Anyway, that's pretty much it. And then you just move it and you go ahead and let it dry.